Well, hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to this tutorial on adding an effects bus to a band lab cakewalk. As with previous videos, I explained that cakewalk is a free piece of software, a digital audio workstation uh, that's available for the Windows platform. It's really rather impressive. Sadly, not available for Mac, um, but do look in the comments section, sorry, the description section below for a link to download it and get using it for absolutely free. I've been working on a project with my students at college. It's the first time they've been in the studio with me. They've done a very, very good job indeed. Very impressed. Previous videos have gone through normalizing, compression, gating. Uh, we're going to the point of adding some effects. There's two ways to add an effect. One is as an insert. So pretty much as a guitarist would use an effects pedal where the signal passes through the effect and then comes out of your output. And you can apply those inserts any way you like into the project using the inspector or the uh, mixing desk so you just go to effects and add effects and that will affect lots of lots of effect in there isn't there <laughs> that will change the way that that channel sounds but only that channel what i'm looking at today is a bus which is an alternative way of adding multi-effects and also allows more live sounding music to sound more natural by adding things like a reverb that might be related to a particular room you imagine your band be playing in. And then you can send more or less all your parts to the same reverb at varying levels to get that natural reverb. So I'll show you how to set it up and I'm going to set one up using reverb today, but you can do one for delay and modulation effects if you like. All sorts available to you, but typically these will be done with reverbs and delays. So to do this, you need your mixer and I've got it open here at the bottom and I need to go to bus. See these kind of like sub menus. They're quite subtle in like gray writing at the top of you. Click on bus and it says insert stereo bus, insert surround bus or delete bus. Well, I'm going to insert a stereo bus and that's added down here, bus D. I'm going to change that straight away, rename it reverb so I know what I'm looking for. I'm going to scroll up and it's just the same as a normal channel. And you plug in your effects as you would an insert. So instead of inserting on say the snare drum where I want a bit of reverb, I'm going to insert in my bus instead. I'm going to insert a reverb. So go to, to do that, you go to effects, click on the plus button. It says insert audio effects. You've got all sorts of options there. I'm just going to go for the single effects here and go to reverb. I'm just going to click the reverb too. I used this earlier and I got quite a nice effect off it. Right, I'm going to look for something nice and natural for this recording. I'm only using four of the tracks on this recording at the moment, the kick, snare, hi-hat and the bass. But it's enough. To now, all along I've been saying compressor, don't use presets. Gate, okay, don't use presets. You've got to tailor those. They're unique to your circumstances. But there are reverbs and delays. Why not? Why not try out a preset? Because I've pretty tried and tested. I mean, you can learn all the parameters if you like, but I'm going to simply use a preset here and then take you through some of the essential parameters. Heavy room. No idea what that's going to sound like, but I'm going to double click on that and load that in. Right. Because I'm using this on a bus and not as an insert, I don't need any dry signal at all emanating from this effect. Dry signal is the original signal, wet signal is the effective signal. So what I want is 100% wet and 0% dry coming from this particular effect. I'm just going to control how much I will use in the mix using the mixing desk instead. So I'm going to take all the dry signal down to infinity below and I'm going to push wet all the way as high as it can go. Actually that's interesting, that's going to plus 12 so technically it should be on zero, shouldn't it? Sorry, I didn't realize that. Don't really want to boost it. There, put that on zero. So it's neither boost nor cut. So there we are, that's it plugged in. But how do we get it to work? I'm just going to close that down. It's still there. I'm going to solo. Um, well, I've already got soloed. The kick drum part, the snare drum part, the hi-hat and the bass guitar. Now, what you don't want, you don't want any reverb on bass instruments. It just doesn't work, well, very rarely anyway, because it just adds to the potential for phasing as you get your bass fixes spread all over the place. You want your bass fixes dead center. And same with the kick drum. 
you don't really want any reverb on your kick drum. So I'm going to go with the snare drum in this instance, just as something to add some reverb to. I may bring another track or two momentarily. But to get this to work, instead of going to effects where I plug the effects in, I'm going to go to sends. And I'm going to pick the bus, which is now called reverb, because I've renamed it. And here we've got three controls. We've got a pre and post button. So you decide whether you want the reverb to work in relation to the fader. So the reverb goes up and down with the fader. That'll be post. That means the reverb's happening post fader. Or whether you want the reverb to be independently controlled just by this control here and the level on the bus. That'll be pre. I'm gonna leave it on pre for now. So I've got a bit more uh, to play with. There's your level, how much you're gonna send sending quite a lot at the moment to this channel and you've got a pan as well you can actually um whether you're going to send more left or more right to this channel but so i'm going to leave that dead center for now let's see what it sounds like we're sending quite a lot was in um so you can hear that nice echoey reverb now on the snare take the way down that's a snare without the reverb That's with that over too much. It's more like a delay than a reverb, isn't it? It's a bit overcooked, but I'll put it in there for now. I'll be tempted to add it to my hi-hat part as well, even though actually in the section I've got um, looped, I'm not hearing much hi-hat. Let's put it in anyway. Let's just for the sake, let's just see what it sounds like. Let's bring some guitar in. Okay, so you can see I've now applied the same reverb to a number of different tracks in this project and it's sounding all like it all belongs in the same space. There you go. That's what it's looping, by the way. It's not the band messing up. So that's basically it. That's how you add a bus for effects. That's how you send signal to the effects. That's how you balance out how much you want in the mix. Um, I hope that was useful to you. I will do more on more effects on a future tutorial. Thanks for watching.